the Christian belief is very similar to our belief, especially the evangelicals, that Jesus is the Messiah and he shall come back towards the end of times, that there shall be a false Messiah, the Antichrist, and that Christ and Antichrist will fight it out, and that Christ will win over the Antichrist in the great Armageddon. In this rough skeleton, we are the same. Evangelicals, Baptists, Muslims, we all believe the same thing. Of course, there are many uh, differences uh, of them. We do not have this as an explicit mention, but they do. And that is that this will only happen when the Bani Israel are gathered in the Holy Land. Okay, this is the belief of evangelicals, that Jesus will only come back when all of the Bani Israel are gathered in the Holy Land. And therefore, because they want to see their Lord and Savior, they are eager to bring the Bani Israel to the Holy Land. And it is because of this that some of the most hardcore Zionists are not people of the Jewish faith. They are evangelicals. Now, ironically, they believe when the Savior comes, the fir one of the first things he's going to do is to get rid of those who didn't believe in him. And primarily, according to their aqidah, the people who tried to kill him or actually succeeded in killing because they believe they succeeded. Now, this is the irony of ironies. Think about it. I need you to understand my point here. This group wants to expedite and support the Bani Israel, to go to this land with the aqidah that they will all be destroyed in that land. You understand this? Wallahi, ajab al-ujab, ajib. How can the other group accept their aid knowing that this group wants us dead? And you know, my mind was perplexed and I actually, you know, I am an interfaith person, I'm involved in whatnot. I had a friendship with one of the rabbis of of uh, Memphis. We got to a very frank point. So I actually asked him, I said, aren't you embarrassed to accept help from people who think that helping you will eventually cause you to be killed? And he just smirked. He goes, well, that's their belief. If they want to throw money and power at us, then, you know, we don't believe it's going to happen. It's their, basically, he said in a nutshell, if they're foolish enough to believe it, that's their business. I'm, we're going to still accept their power and help. So we have to understand this point, O oh Muslims. The people who are supporting this guy in the White House, right? This whole move to Jerusalem, the capital, whatnot. This is all a tactical decision. He might be a blabbering idiot, but he is a tactical blabbering idiot. He knows what he's doing. He is feeding his base. He's giving them the scraps from the table. Why is he doing this? He knows his base is evangelical. He knows this people, they want him. And so they feed him this stuff for do, to do what? Because they want this land to be the promised land for the promised people so that the Messiah comes and gets rid of these very people to establish heaven on earth and whatnot and the final judgment day, all of this is going to happen. So this is the aqidah of the evangelicals. By the way, Catholics are different. Please, Muslims, educate yourselves. Don't be you know, any kindergarten level in your education and just extrapolate. Every Christian group is different. Every firqa is different. Learn your firq if you want to get involved in this issue. Otherwise, do not speak. Speak with knowledge or remain silent. How about the Yehud? How about the Yehud? What is their belief in the Messiah? And why is our Prophet ﷺ saying that the majority of, of, of the followers of, of uh, the Jal will be from that group? Well, in Jewish eschatology, the term Messiah, it refers specifically, they do have this aqidah, and it refers to a future king from the line of David. The Messiah in their aqidah is called the King Messiah. Malach Mashiach. Because for them, the Messiah is a political figure, not a religious reformer. Okay? For them it was, the Messiah is a one of power and politics. So the Messiah in Jewish folklore is a king from the line of Dawood, who will bring about the restoration of the status of the Israelites and reconstruct the temple of Israel. Okay? So they do believe in the Messiah as a political figure and who will bring back the kingdom of who? 
of Dawood. And this has been a mainstream of ancient, medieval, and even some modern Jewish movements as we're going to come to right now. And that is why, dear Muslims, when the Messiah Isa came, and he began preaching to the Bani Israel, and he claimed he was the Messiah, the Yehud did not care about a Messiah that's a spiritual reformer. They wanted a Messiah who is what? Who is a king. And so when they found out that this person is not a king, they went and complained to the king, to the Roman emperor, and they said, we have a man who is claiming to be the king of the Israelites. Did Isa claim to be king? Why did the Yehud say he's claiming to be king? Because he claimed to be the Messiah. And in the eyes of the Yehud, the Messiah is who? The king. And so, what happened with Pontius Pilate, what happened with them happened, and they said, oh, this is a political agitator. They would not have cared if, they, if Jesus said he's a religious reformer. They didn't care. What is there to do with a religious reformer? But they did worry that he's claiming to be a king. They don't want any political trouble. And that's why what happened happened. And so they then went to arrest him. And then what happened, we will talk maybe in a, another lecture. What do we Muslims believe and what are the various theories out there? But anyway, now you understand that issue. Now the issue we need to come back to is that belief in the advent of the Messiah was a mainstream of Jewish uh, theology. And for them, the Messiah will bring back the power and the Izza of the kingdom of David that used to be. And therefore, all of their history that they consider to be the greatest Jewish mind, and that is the Jewish theologian, the most famous in the history of Judaism. Musa ibn Maymun, Maimonides, memorize this name. This is the single greatest intellectual of Jewish history completely. They call him the chief rabbi, Rambam. And he is the first and most important Jewish figure to write a book of Aqidah. And he summarized it in 13 points. And he called it the 13 principles of Iman. So, the 12th principle of these 13, and I quote from the translation, I believe with full faith, and ma'min, and a mu'min, in the coming of the Messiah. This is in the Aqidah of Maimonides, which is the standard Aqidah of the Jewish peoples up until our times. He is the only one who has codified to that level, Aqidah and Fiqh. I believe with full faith, yaqeen, certainty, in the coming of the Messiah. And even though he delays, with all that delay, I eagerly await his arrival, every day anticipating his arrival. This is the Aqidah of Maimonides that the Yehud would memorize that they still believe to this day. And as I have mentioned to you earlier, within Orthodox there are many, many uh, strands. And of course, you have the Hasidic Orthodox. You are all familiar with the Hasidic, H-A-S-I-D-A, the Hasidic. And the Hasidic in particular is a strand of Orthodox. They have a very strong and passionate belief about the coming of the Messiah, that he's very imminent, just about to appear. And they believe, and this is important again, that the more pious they are, the more quickly the Messiah will come. And that explains their fervousness that explains their ultra yani, literalism right they want to be the more pious they are so the more faithful they are the faster will come the the messiah amongst the conservatives some of them believe in the messiah some of them don't amongst the orthodox they all believe in the messiah is that clear belief in messiah is common amongst the yahud Therefore, do you think it is surprising when towards the end of time somebody with power comes and claims to be the Messiah and he is from that background? Is it surprising that lots of people will then accept that claim? It makes sense. You now understand why our Prophet said that many of his followers will be of that group. Now, important point. Our Prophet did not say many of that group will be his followers. Big difference. 
It is possible that many of that group, many of the Jews, will recognize truth and falsehood. It is possible. But from those who choose to follow him, many will be from that background.